Hello everybody! So in this video I will show to you how to make zinc hexacyanoferrite battery. So in basic I make this video because uh, I get many requests, I mean I get many emails uh, how to make this zinc hexacyanoferrite battery. Uh, so because the reasons uh, which you claim guys are that if you make this type of battery at home uh, the battery don't work uh, properly Robert already make this zinc hexaciano ferrite battery in his live stream the link of his uh, live stream will be in description below so I will make just a basic video about this type of battery uh, I already make this battery in the past and I can tell you that this battery have really good potential to be good uh, but for more details uh, you need to watch Robert's live stream so like I said the link of his live stream will be in description uh, I know that uh, his live stream have uh, some problems uh, with the sound but yeah this is live stream so if you don't have really good connection I mean really good internet connection or something like this uh, the video can be really bad so in basic what you need to make this battery uh, is some zinc sulfate uh, this zinc sulfate will be also used for electrolyte and oh shit and yeah you see here uh, potassium hexaferrite good <laughs> okay nice uh, to make active material for the zinc uh, hexacyanoferrite you need this which is potassium hexacyanoferrite and zinc sulfate uh, we will measure in mole ratio is one to one mole ratio uh, I will put 3.2 grams of this and 2.8 grams of zinc sulfate okay cool uh, like I said uh, this one I will put 3.2 grams Okay, so each component you will uh, put in 100 milliliters of water. And of course, you need to stir it. or you are put on ma magnetic stirrer the next material will be zinc sulfate uh, I need 2.8 grams of zinc sulfate oh, 
too much. Okay. And this one you put in another uh, cup, which also have 100 milliliters of water. But this one I will stir with a hand. So that's it. And now I have two materials uh, which I will later put in one. Here I have this potassium uh, hexocyanoferrite. Uh, I put uh, 3.2 grams on in uh, 100 milliliters of water. Here I have sodium sulfate which I put uh, 2.8 grams uh, in 100 milliliters of water and now the craziest part uh, so in this section you need a lot of time so if you watch Robert's live stream on this uh, you will see that you need a lot of time because you need to put a zinc sulfate solution uh, into this one drop by drop and it's better if you mix so I will put this one in the stirrer uh, and I will put uh, zinc sulfate really really slowly to this one I get a little bit dark orange color because I add uh, zinc sulfate too quickly. Uh, really, you need to add zinc sulfate really, really slowly. But anyway, I will try with this one and I will see what I can get. Now, we need to filter it and also we need to dry this material and we are ready for the next step. I really hate filtration because this the filtration takes so long. Uh, so what I will do now, uh, you see that this material which I need is on the bottom if you leave it for some time. Uh, so I will put away this, uh, this solution and I will put the, this cup on the hot plate. This was way more easier uh, like filtration. Really awesome. Here I have the active material which is uh, the weight of this material is 0 0.5 grams uh, into this I will put 0 0.10 grams of uh, a mix of graphite and carbon black and you make a slurry so also 
you can add uh, 0 0.05 grams of uh, some binder but in my case I will skip the binder because I will use this one uh, this is graffiti carbon fiber uh, and this active material will soak into uh, this fiber this will be good And now I will soak this material into graphitic carbon fiber. But you can use some binder if you want or you make like I do. So this is the active material. Also, I need some sort of separator. Uh, in my case, I will use filter paper. Here is the cathode. Like I said, uh, the current collector is made from graphol. Uh, the active material on the positive electrode or the cathode is zinc hexa cyanoferrite. Uh, this will be the separator and the electrolyte will be two, uh, two mole zinc sulfate. And on the top I will put piece of zinc oh a little bit I put too much electrolyte Now it's cool. And the battery is ready. For the start, let's measure the voltage. and I get 1.9 volts and I just make uh, this battery and already produce 1.9 volts Really awesome. So I will also try how many milliamps can produce this one. So I've uh, I get two milliamps scale. Four hundred 
Williams. Okay. This is good. Uh, now I will connect this battery to to to, uh, to the electronic load. And now I will set uh, to 20 milliamps of discharge and the cut off voltage will be 0 0.9 volts uh, because I will not go very deep into discharge because this is this battery is not like uh, I don't know dual carbon batteries which you can uh, discharge completely because if you discharge other batteries uh, too deep uh, the performance will decrease over time so you can damage that cell uh, so the voltage drops to 1.7 volts and this is how to say something normal for this type of battery this battery normal have uh, the energy density of uh, 100 uh, watt hours per kilogram and also the voltage is from 1.9 to 1.6 volts uh, normally uh, the working voltage of this battery is 1.7 volts So, I will leave it like this and we see us in the ending. Okay guys, I see that I will be here for decades. It's 34 minutes and still we have, I mean, we still on voltage of 1.53 volts and guys uh, the battery is almost finished and now is finished uh, so 47 minutes it's really really awesome so guys that's it from me uh, and we see us in the next video bye <laughs>